Hi, if you're a patron, you already have access to specialized video training from Blender to Snapchat AR. And you can check it out right now by visiting patreon.com slash 3dcinetv.com. You will also get special sneak previews and working files that will boost your creativity with augmented reality lens filters. Okay, it's time to demystify the NLA and the action clips in Blender 2.9. So just open it, then press Shift 8. Let's add a monkey. Let's refine that monkey because we're interested in animation. So the first thing we're going to do is to divide this window so we can have also a dope sheet window. So now we have a timeline and also a dope sheet. Let's make a another space and now let's create this uh, for a F curve editor. Okay, so once we have these three windows here, we're going to position our monkey and then we're going to press I and then press O to insert keyframes in the location and then rotations. If you come here to the F curve and then you open up this object, Susan Action, you will see that all of the parameters where we keyed are displayed in a list. And now in this dope sheet, we're going to transform it into an action editor. So you can see that. Why? Because every time we create an action or a keyframe rather, an action is automatically created under your hierarchy on the outliner under the animation uh, subcategory, if we can say it so. It's organized that way. If you uh, open it, open this object here on the F curve editor and also on the dope sheet action editor, you will see only keyframes. You will not see the curves, the animation curve. So let's move our playhead to frame 100 and also let's move Suzanne. And now again, press I and then the letter O and then we're going to notice down here on our dope sheet action editor, these yellow lines, which means that the values did not change over time. And those correspond to rotation. And here in the timeline, as you can see, they are almost similar. But what we're interested in right now is to generate animation. So therefore, we're going to take notice on the F curve editor. If you press home, you're going to focus all of the keyframes that you already have in this window editor. So by clicking each one of these keyframes, you're going to activate a channel, but it's easier for you if you work with the channels, with the animation channels, if you hide the ones that you're not working with. So select the ones that we're, work, we're gonna work with and then press Shift H, which will hide the non-selected channels. You can see them here, they are locked. So we do not need to worry about that. Now let's change this animation because right now if you play it back, you can see that monkey starts very slow and then slopes up and what we need to do here is to change the keyframe interpolation. Select the keyframes and then press T. Then select linear. So that way we have an acceleration from frame 1 to frame 100 in a linear fashion. That, that is what we want. Let's go crazy! So you can notice here in the action editor now, there is an action called Suzanne action, which is also here in the outliner. Let's change the name to monkey moves 1 to 100. It is time to present to you the NLA, the nonlinear animation editor window. So switch this windows here. Let's talk about how this action editor corresponds or interacts with the NLA because this is the mystery for most of the new users. So let's demystify this once and for all. So you can see here, I have my objects, scene objects, and my Suzanne object, which also contains an action. But this action right now only um, contains F curves. And you can see those keyframes in frame one and frame 100. If you also right click on this side of the panel, you'll get additional options. So you can see the action that is living right here in the outliner. Obviously, if you play it back, you can see the uh, the Zen monkey move, but what we need to understand is what this push down button is right here and what does it does. 
when you push down an action from an F curve to be created in the NLA, an action clip is created and three things happen. All of the animation is cleared from all of the other windows and then you're left out with this NLA track, which does not have the name of your clip, of your action clip, of your F curve clip. So you need to rename it by clicking on this channel and now you have a clip and then you have a channel with the same name. You need to do this manually. Now, if you press N, you will get additional options whenever you manipulate this NLA channel or this NLA clip rather. When you click on a clip, then you can press N and then you are presented with this panel specifically with the strip option tab in which you can manipulate the action clip duration, the cycles, the blending modes, and most uh, important stuff when you're animating. So right now you see the extrapolation being placed to hold and the blending mode being set to replace. I work with this all the time in addition mode because whenever I want to add new uh, translations or manipulations, I do that. You can also go here in the timeline and then activate keying and then also add replace. And that way you can animate in top on top of your NLA clip and it will add up to that clip. So we're not going to review that today. We're just going to understand how to export correctly from Blender to any other package such as, such as Unity. All of our actions, all of our uh, animations and everything has to be uh, correctly named. And this is how we do this. So let's continue with the NLA. And if you scroll down, you can also see that we have a cycle strip option if you continue to scroll down, you will see the action itself. And then there is this um, option where you can um, repeat the actual cycle of this. So if we place two, we're going to repeat this two times. And since our clip was only 100 frames, obviously it will be 200 frames now because it's been uh, repeated two twice, two times. So let's place this back at one. Uh, if you scroll this, you will notice that this will place because it is active. This little checkbox here means that it's active. If you uncheck it, then you will see a dashed line around the clip. That means that it will have no influence over all of the other editors. So there's nothing that you can do there because once it's turned off, it will not influentiate its weight over the other clips. So we have, again, a clear uh, space a clear action to start working. So let's start again on frame one and then press I and then press O again. If you notice a new action was uh, blinking down there, immediately it's created whenever you press uh, to insert keyframes in your object and you have your um, uh, F curve editors cleared. And now let's continue to work with them. As you can see, the exercise. Um, theme has these uh, colors red to identify keyframes and green to identify uh, edited keyframes or as I call them in between keyframes. So if you position yourself over 250 you can place another keyframe and now we have this monkey rolling. So let's um, name that action as such. I'm going to come here to the action editor. You can see the name right there. It's a generic name. It's the object plus action. And now I'm going to call this monkey rolls one underscore 250. And you can see it listed on the outliner. And you can see the NLA track from the previous action. So right now we have created a new action, but it's not in the NLA. What do we need to do? We need to, again, uh, you can see the list here. You can see that we are on the action editor. This is the action. And now this is the, the action channel, but it's not an animation clip. Please, please get this uh, difference uh, together with the explanation that we're going through right now. So we need to push that those F curves 
into an animation clip okay so you do that by clicking here or by clicking here on push down where is it going to push it to to the nla and this is how you get f curves to be contained in an animation clip and the nla is just a uh, container the holder of all of those clips in which you can also work so this is the name of my action i'm going to click push down and now i have uh, that nla track which i should rename remember you do this by hand and you can also check it if you are going to uh, have this weight influentiate uh, the nla track and if you deactivate then it will not play along with anything so now we have two tracks in the NLA track which contain two animation clips which came from our F curve editor which in turn were produced or named by our action editor in the dope sheet okay let's do a third one again everything is cleared but as soon as you put one single keyframe then automatically the name of the object plus the word action is going to be added in the action editor okay as you can see here it is always like that until you rename this action okay so let's rename this i'm going to be calling this monkey full st srt underscore one to 250. this is important because you need to know how long your animation lasts okay so going to push it down now and this is going to send all of those F curves contained into a single animation clip down into the NLA again the first thing I'll do in the NLA is to rename the channel and also you can see it is active so that's the top most clip that is reproducing at the time of playing back the timeline okay so the general timeline will play back any channel that is active or upmost top so what if I need to switch or change something in my F curves from my first clip no problem you select your clip and then press tab and this will get you into a special session to go back to your F curve editor and then work in your curves you can change then your curves this is why the um, exercise mod theme is theme in purple because this bar right here this clip right here will have to do will have to deal with the n uh, property panel in the 3d viewport when you're done you can click tab again you can also edit the stash action um, that you have previously saved uh, we're not going to be talking about a stash although you can ask me in the questions from the comment below i would like i would love to answer them and right now as you can see this clip is active so therefore it's only playing from 1 to 100 now what happens if we activate clip number 2 which is at, which is top most of 1 then we will see that is the full influence of the top clip not the lower clip because it's, it's below it's like thinking about layers you know if I activate the top most layer or the top most NLA channel that is the one that is going to proceed over the other channels as well so then you say um, it is possible to mix them if you're thinking about this as a layers then of course you can roll this um, down the timeline and then you have your animation clips saved so that you can mix them cycle them or create special animations from the mix of those uh, animation clips and yes you can edit them like any uh, any other you know like video <laughs> strip but in this case we're only working with F curves that are contained inside this animation clip which in turn are edited in the NLA I hope that is clear because I cannot explain this any more clear than that okay so what happens if I want to blend these things because you know I've heard that the NLA power is in blending stuff yes you can and of course yes you will uh, if you come here to the properties of each of the clips for example this one clip number two which is uh, monkey rolls 
you can see that we need to um, intersect the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip with the first and third clip. So how do we do that? You can position your second clip above all the others. And now let's determine or let's find out how many frames it will take for this clip to blend from the previous clip onto the next one. So you can see this little, little gray line right here, which is to be meant as a curve. So that way it, it will show just like when you're blending um, wave, sound waves, it will show you where it will begin and where it will end. And you can manipulate this from the active strip and blend out. This factor right here, auto blend, will also help you to automatically blend between the intersecting sections. So if you place this at zero and this blend in at zero, the blend out, which is this section, if you check this one out, it will automatically set the difference between that clip intersection with the one below. Blender does it automatically for you, so that's good news. Marvelous, it blends fantastically. Now you ask, uh, why does it make that heavy jump? Because remember, at all positions, we start on frame one from this exact location. So now let's reposition all of our NLA clips. And finally, let's go to export FBX. Let's explore the options that we have. But before I do that, please notice that our outliner has already NLA tracks, which correspond to each of the action names. Each channel corresponds to its action clips. So the important thing here is that you click on this gear icon to see these options. And from there, you can open bake animation. In bake animation, you have all of these options, keel bones, NLA strips, and all actions checked. Okay. Armature will help you to export, of course, all of the bones in case you're exporting a rig. Geometry will help you with your normals, with your custom normals. Transforms will tell the, the um, location, position, and rotations of your bones. And of course, you need to check always armature and mesh. And also selected objects. It's a, it's a default preferred selection. So let's um, choose the name, choose the directory, and then export the VV, I'm sorry, export the FBX. Open Unity, for example, then drag and drop your asset, which is which in this case is Suzanne. And we can see the material, we can see the proper mesh, and now we can see the animation clips. It is coming from our FBX, and we can read the name up here. This is called Monkey Full S uh, SRT, and it's um, numbers which correspond to the keyframes. So right now you can see this is one to 250 and every transformation is there. That's why we named it like that. And of course, the last one is going to be uh, this one, which is named uh, Monkey Fool SRT one to 250 animation clip. But if you continue to go down into the list, you will see other, other uh, animation clips as well. But the difference is that they are not named with Zuzan. The previous one don't, do not have Zuzan active. And that is, that is because in the actions, in the NLA, actually, let's uh, re-export this. We need to uh, remove the NLA options to export the NLA strips because it's taking like this double list of actions to export. The ones that are contained inside the FVX and the ones that are contained in the NLA because you can have mixed actions as well. So let's clear all the NLAs, tracks, all the NLA tracks, right click and clear empty once you have deleted everything. And now you can come here to the action editor. You will notice that these have a zero user um, icon. And that means that uh, now we need to filter our option going to this filter blender icon and from there we go to actions and we see this scene action which was our original default scene action and it was empty so we need to get rid of this so just right click on it and delete now we have our three only actions that we want to export 
and they are not included in MLA channels. It's cleared, it's empty, no problemo. Save now. If you save right now and close your file, you will lose everything that you did. This is because you need to protect or create a fake user for all of these actions that do not have any users in the NLA. Therefore, you can do that by coming here and clicking on this little shield icon and that it's going to assign a fake user. Now, if you press this X, this will clear and get ready your action editor for a new animation, all right? Don't worry about your previous actions because they are all saved inside Blender's data structure. They have a fake user and now if you save, close and open Blender, they will stay there. Even though they are not on the action editor and they are not on the NLA, they are inside the data structure in Blender. So that's how it's used. So that X is not to clear, it's not to delete. I'm sorry, it's not to delete, it's just to clear. So come back here, uncheck NLA strips, and then export the FBX once again. So now let's drop the new file again into Unity. Open up your uh, the container. This is the new uh, mesh. Open it up, and surely enough, we only have the three action animation clips. I'm sorry, the three actions that we exported. So you can see there, it's animation clip, and it corresponds to the ones that we already left on the Blender data structure. So let's drag and drop Suzanne. Let's reposition to here on the world. And one good advice is that you switch your camera view to 24. And that is all. This is how you demystify the NLA and action clip export to Unity or Lenses Studio or Spark. Thank you.